Brittany Sawyer is busy. When my husband goes to work, I stay home and take care of everything around here. Try a new list today. That includes her three kids, who she homeschools. So Brittany doesn't have time for power problems. A lot of great curriculum uses either computer, or TV, or DVD-based, and um, it would be very crippling to not be able to do that. So when we lose power, there's not a ton that we can do. Living in Houston, you expect sporadic power outages from time to time, especially during severe weather. They're usually nothing more than a nuisance, with power restored in a couple of hours. More widespread power outages, like those we see during hurricanes, are more problematic, lasting for days. A successful cyber attack on Houston's power grid could be much worse. Our general mission is to be able to come in and help our community respond and recover from events, cyber attacks included. Channel 2 investigates found there are thousands of cyber attacks against critical infrastructure like power grids every day in Houston and in cities across the country. Most of them are not wide-scale attacks designed to shut down entire systems. But Francisco Sanchez's team at the Office of Emergency Management still prepares for a worst case scenario. It could be very serious if technology uh, to the Office of Emergency Management or any partners like transportation were impacted. Uh, but our job is to be paranoid. In the summer of 2003, a massive blackout crippled New York City's transit system for days. Turns out it wasn't a cyber attack. It was a bug, but a big one. No subways, no traffic lights. People jammed the streets trying to get home any way they could. Thousands were forced back to the basics on foot. A successful attack on our power grid could cause chaos on our already traffic choked streets. Ground airplanes shut down the port and render light rail useless. But that chaos may be a secondary concern. We would want to check on nursing homes, hospitals, uh, more challenging, those people in the community who rely on medical equipment that needs to have power. Um, and so our response would be geared towards making sure that life safety was our first mission. The Electric Reliability Council of Texas, or ERCOT, provides power to 90% of the state, more than 25 million people. ERCOT prepares year-round for any type of threat to the electric system. It's our first line of defense. We have highly trained cybersecurity staff that are continually monitoring the electric system to help us safeguard against any threats. ERCOT uses a five-function framework to guard against cyber threats. Identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. And while the experts say a massive grid-killing attack is not very likely, the threat still makes Brittany Sawyer think. What do we use electricity for? And it really is a lot. Last year, Texas lawmakers passed a few bills to pump up protection. One creates a grid security council. The other establishes a cybersecurity monitor. Now, next Thursday night at 10, we're going to take a look at how an attack on our banking and finance industry could also impact us. Joel Eisenbaum, KPRC, Channel 2 News.